video we're going to be looking at direct proportion or direct variation. So, A is directly proportional to B. If um, something is directly proportional to something else, then as one increases, the other one increases. So if A is directly proportional to B, as A increases, so would B. Another way of writing that is A varies directly to B. These two sentences mean exactly the same thing. Okay, now how to write that in maths? To write that in maths, you're going to see a new symbol, okay, and that's the proportional symbol. So A is proportional to B, okay? So there's the proportional symbol. Um, some people call it little fish, um, but it's just the proportional symbol, so A is proportional to B. Okay, um, now, I remember, as A increases, so does B. So what that means is that A would equal K times B. So if you times B by a certain number, you'd get A. So to get rid of the proportional sign, you put in an equal sign and a K. So A is proportional to B. You can also write A equals K times B. Let's have a look at doing some questions using this now. Okay, let's have a look at our first example. So Y is directly proportional to X. If Y equals 20, X equals 5. Find Y if X equals 15. So to solve a question like this, first of all, let's read the sentence. Y is directly proportional to X. So we write that down. Y is proportional to X. And if it's directly proportional, it's just like that. Now let's get rid of the proportional sign. So write Y equals K times X. K is the constant of proportionality. It's the number that's going to stay a constant throughout the question. Okay, so it's the constant of proportionality. What we do is we use the first uh, bit of information, the first pair of numbers, to work out what the constant of proportionality is. We then get our formula, and then we use our formula for any other part of the question. Okay, so uh, y equals k times x. Now we know if y equals 20, so 20 equals k times y, which or times x, which is 5, so times 5. So that means that k would be 4. Whenever you divide 20 by 5, you get k equals 4. So then we know that the constant of proportionality is 4. It gives us the key formula. The formula becomes y equals, instead of kx, we write y equals 4x, because we know k is 4. So this is the formula. To get y, you times the x value by 4. So y equals 4 times x. So let's then solve the question. It says find y if x equals 15. So we get y equals 4 times x, which is 4 times 15, and then that would be equal to 60. Okay, that was fairly straightforward. Now, in the questions, it's not always just proportional to x. It's sometimes proportional to x squared, or to the square root of x, or x cubed, and so on. So let's have a look at one of those now. Okay, so y is directly proportional to the square of x. When y equals 5, x equals 4. Find the value of y when x equals 8. So first of all, start off with the information to tell you. y is directly proportional to the square of x, so that's x squared, the square of x, x squared. So then you replace that with y equals the constant of proportionality, k, times x squared. So y equals kx squared. Now we're going to use the next part of the information. When y equals 5, x equals 4. So we'll put those in to find out what k is. So y is 5, so 5 equals k times x squared. Well, x is 4, so times 4 squared. So 5 equals k times 16. So to find out k, you're going to divide 5 by 16. So k equals 5 divided by 16 in your calculator, like so. And you get it equal to 5 sixteenths, or 0 0.3125. So now we know what k is, we can then use that in the formula. Okay, So we had the formula was y equals k times x squared. So it's going to be y equals 0 0.3125, uh, or I suppose 5 sixteenths, depending on which way you want to write it. Um, 0 0.3125 times x squared. So, let's um, says find the value for y whenever x equals 8. So you're going to do y equals 0 0.3125 times 8 squared. So just work that out in your calculator. You're going to do 0 0.3125 multiplied by 8 squared. And you get that to be equal to 20. So y equals 20. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. You always, it's, it follows the same procedure. You start off with whatever information it tells you. You write it in with the proportional sign. You then replace the proportional sign with equals k times it.
and then you use the pair of information to work out what k is and then you put that in and into the formula to get the formula you're going to use which in this case is y equals 0.3125 x squared and then you use the other information to work out the missing letter um, yeah okay this time we've got y is directly proportional to x cubed when x equals 2 y equals 40 find x if y equals 800 so again start off with the information y is directly proportional to x cubed cubed replace the proportional sign so y equals k x cubed let's put in the information so x equals 2 and y equals 40 so you get 40 equals k times 2 cubed 2 cubed is 8 so 40 equals k times 8 so suppose k will then be equal to 5 that then gives us the formula, which is y equals 5 times, so you're putting the 5 into here, 5x cubed. Now this time you're trying to find what x is, so y equals 800. So you write that down, 800 equals 5x cubed. You solve this equation, so divide by 5, so you get 160 equals x cubed. And then I suppose then you want to find out what x is, so you're going to do the cube root of 160. So the cube root of 160 and then you use that use your calculator to do that so you do the cube root is um, above the square root so shift and then 160 equals 5.428 so on so that's equal to 5.43 to two decimal places okay so the x would be equal to 5.43 to two decimal places so whenever you're trying to find the letter like y, whatever the subject is, then you're just going to have to solve like an equation. Last example, y is directly proportional to the square root of x. Whenever x equals 100, y is equal to 12, and it says find out the missing value. So, uh, start off with the information, y is directly proportional to the square root of x. So remember, replace the um, proportional sign, so y equals k square root x. And then let's use this pair of information here to work it out. So whenever x is 100, k is equal to 12. So you get 12 equals k times the square root of 100. The square root of 100 is 10, so 12 equals k times 10. So k equals 1.2. So then that gives us the formula. If you put the 1.2 back in, y equals 1.2 times the square root of x. Now, we know that y equals 36. So we're trying to find out this number. So if you get 36 equals 1.2 times the square root of x. So divide by 1.2. So um, that's going to be equal to 1.2. 6 divided by 1.2 equals 30. What's that? Equals the square root of x. We don't want the square root of x, so we square both sides. So we get 900 equals x. So x equals 900. And that's it.